people always ask about what can, are there lifestyle changes or things you can do to help with your disease? Um, and again, I don't think this is generally specific to CLL or cancer um, or even other medical problems. I think the more that someone can take care of in general their body, um, you know, and that means moderation in, in your habits, uh, ex some exercise and eating well, uh, that I think that that will go, that will hold longer than anything else. Because if you take care of yourself, your organs work better as we age. Um, there'll be less medical problems. Or if you have diabetes, you know, you're controlling those medical problems. So if you have diabetes, you have heart disease, but you take medications to make sure they're under control, that will preserve your organ function. So that th therapies that we, your doctor looks for, they're gonna take into consideration how your organ function is. And i.e., that means your performance status and how fit you are. So the better you're able to take care of, of your body, the more options I think patients have for treating their disease because they're less frail. Uh, hopefully some of these new, newer therapies, uh, I think some of the data suggests that, you know, even some of these newer therapies, frailer individuals can take them, which is a good thing, because that wasn't what we had back in the day with chemoimmunotherapy. Um, I think that, you know, you ha I think it's always important to talk with your doctor if you're going to take supplements. Um, I think it's always important you need to, over the whatever you put in your body, whether it's prescribed or it's something you buy, you know, over the counter at a, at a vitamin store, you need to discuss with your doctor what you're taking because they may have drug-drug interactions if you happen to also be on therapy for your CLL. And that's important because it may increase the toxicity or decrease the response to the therapy if there are drug interactions or cause a side effect from the supplement. The supplement may be increased uh, and cause you toxicity. And again, we're, we're worried about preserving your organ function. So it's always important to bring whatever other medications that you're going to or would like to take um, that you bring that to the attention of your, your physician so they can review your medicines, whether prescribed or not prescribed, and make sure that there aren't interactions. Um, uh, I think there's obviously a lot when you look on. Um, the internet can be helpful, but it can be very dangerous. And so uh, you can Google lots of different diets for patients with CLL or cancer in general. But I think that unfortunately there's a lot of limited data that we have currently. It doesn't mean that, you know, living a healthy lifestyle is bad and, and doctors don't believe in this. I think that is just when we talk about um, what may be good for one cancer versus another, there's been actually some studies that have shown that some supplements have actually been harmful for certain cancers. And so we just lack data right now. So I think moderation and showing and making sure that your physician is aware of what you might be taking. Um, and, you know, and I think they'll be supportive if you, if you certainly there are things you, you would like to do, but they have to make sure you're safe first. And there may be interactions if you're on active therapy versus if you're just on surveillance. Um, people also ask, I think, that it's important as a CLL patient to make sure that you're up to date with your other health care issues. Um, cancer screening for other cancers is important. We know that patients with CLL have a higher incidence of other cancers, and those other cancers are potentially curative, skin cancer. Um, so, you know, make sure you're going to the dermatologist once a year. Um, screening for, for colon cancer, screening for breast cancer. These are all doable things because if they find those cancers early, they're detectable, they're cured. Um, so there's, we're, we're very, uh, uh, very pushy in my clinic about making sure you guys do all you need to do for, for cancer screening. Another thing that patients also ask about um, routinely are about vaccines. We know that a lot of CLL patients are more, their immune systems are more compromised. Um, and so certainly we're looking to see if we can decrease your risk of infection. And so I'm a proponent of vaccines. Um, doesn't mean they work, right? So we can get the flu shot and it may not be to the, to the optimal strain that year. And so you could still get the flu, uh, but hopefully it'll decrease the severity of the flu if you should get it. Um, and so I think that many of us are a proponent of vaccines. Uh, again, we advocate dead vaccines only. Um, so no live vaccines for, for individuals with CLL. Um, uh, but that would be another thing to try to, again, we're trying to reduce risk of patients um, having infectious issues or getting sick. It's all about being proactive about your health care.